Hello everyone. Now let's continue our discussion about chapter 3 which talks about the adjusting process. And now we're going to see the different scenarios where we'll need uh, adjustments or adjusting entries. So we'll start with the first one which is accrued revenues. I want you to remember that in, in adjusting entries we have two types of terms. We have accrued and deferred. The word accrued translated or tra try to convert it to unpaid. And the word deferred, try to convert it to the word prepaid. So whenever you see accrued revenue, this can be easily translated as unpaid revenue. In other words, it's a revenue that we earned, but we didn't get the cash. So the cash hasn't, hasn't been received yet. So during an accounting period, some revenues are recorded only when cash is received. At the end of an accounting period, there may be revenue that has been earned, but has not been recorded. And this is where we need an adjusting entry. So we can record the revenue that has been earned, even though the cash hasn't been received. So in such cases, the revenue is recorded by increasing or debiting an asset and increasing or crediting a revenue account. That's how we're going to record this kind of uh, uh, promise to get the cash and we record the revenue that has been earned. So let's see an example. Assume that Net Solutions, which is our company here, signed an agreement with Dankner Company on December 15th to provide services at a rate of $20 per hour. As of December 31st, Net Solutions has provided 25 hours of service. The revenue would be billed on January 15th. So during the month of December, we had provided 25 hours of service. We didn't bill them yet because we typically bill the customer on January 15th. Yet, there is revenue that has been earned here. So we have to record the earnings of 25 hours, which are at a rate of 20, so that's about $500. So how are we going to do that? So on December 31st, we need to make an adjusting entry. And remember, adjusting entries, they happen on the last, he, last, last day in the period. And in this case here, we have December 31st. And we need to record two accounts. One should be an income statement account and the other should be a balance sheet account. So we are debiting accounts receivable because now we all want to record that we should expect this 500 or these $500 to be coming from the customer. So we're debiting accounts receivable, which is an asset for $500, and we credit fees earned, which is a revenue account, it's an income statement account for the same value, which is $500. That's an adjusting entry. It includes year end recording, does not involve cash. One account is a balance sheet account and the other is an income statement account. And again, how did we get the $500? It's the 25 hours that we worked for our client here or our customer and $20 each. So the total is 500. So how did this affect the account equation? Under assets, we're going to increase accounts receivable by $500 and under revenue, which has a positive impact on stockholders' equity, we're going to credit $500. So one is debited and the other is credit, no cash. Remember, adjusting entries never involve cash. So if the adjustments for the accrued revenue is not recorded, let's say we forgot to make this kind of adjusting entry, what would be the impact on the income statement balance sheet? So fees earned and net income would be understated by the $500 on the, on the income statement. See how this happens. On the balance sheet, <clears throat> assets and stockholders' equity would also be understated by $500. So the effect of omitting or ignoring to record this adjusting entry would have an impact on the income statement and the balance sheet. So again, one more time, we'll start with the income statement. Since we didn't record the revenue, then our net income would be understated. Okay, when we don't record the revenue, it would be less than it should be. So our net income would be less than it should be. And if our net income is less than it should be, <clears throat> that would be reflected on the stockholders' equity. It would also be less than it should be by $500. And we also did not record the accounts receivable, so our assets would be understated by $500. So when an accrued revenue is not recorded in an adjusting entry, we should expect that the income statement would be understated. Like, I mean, the net income would be understated. The assets would be also understated and the stockholders' equity would be also understated. 
So some types of services used in earnings revenue are paid for after the service has been performed. At the end of the accounting period, the amount of such accrued or accrued but unpaid items is an expense and a liability. This adjusting entry is necessary so that expenses are properly matched to the period in which they, are, they were incurred in earnings revenue. So we talked about accrued revenues. Now let's look at the other side of the coin, which is accrued expenses. And remember, remember the, the word accrued can be easily prepared, like translated into unpaid. So unpaid expenses. In other words, we incur the expense, but we didn't pay for it. So instead of accounts receivable, now we have to record accounts payable or whatever payable that we have to pay. It could be rent payable, it could be subscription payable or wages payable. So we'll see some examples. So let's see one of these examples. Net Solutions pays its employees bi-weekly. So this is every other week. During December, Net Solutions pays or paid wages of $950 on December 13th and $1,200 on December 27th. These payments covered pay periods ending on those days. As of December 31st, Net Solutions owes $250 of wages to its employees for Monday and Tuesday, December 30 and 31. Therefore, the wages expense account is increased by $250 and the wages payable account is increased by $250. We'll see that in the next slide. So let me, let me try to explain to you here. So here do you see the month of December. They pay their employees bi-weekly, which is every other week, on a Friday. So, for the first two weeks of December, they pay them on the 13th for 10 days, which is 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And then for the second, or the last two weeks of December, you can see that they paid on the 27th for the 10 days, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. Now, their next payment is going to be on January 10th. Yet, our employees worked for us two days in December, 30 and 31. Did we pay them on 31? No, we're going to pay them on the 10th. But we incurred the expense of wages for two days. And this is why we need to make an adjusting entry for these two days even though the payment, the full payment of the 10 days is going to be on January 10th. So, as it says here, paid wages expense of 950 for the first 10 days, and again paid $1,200 for the second um, two weeks, and then accrued wages expense, again remember, unpaid for, for the day of December and, and December 31st. These were 250 so the total wages expense for the month of December would be 950, 1200 and 250 which were not paid. The 250 would be paid later on on the 10th. So paid accrued wages for December 30 and 31st, the 250 here on the 10th. We're going to pay wages expense for those um, 8 days which is 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 6, 7, 8 and 9 is 1025 so the total payment would be 12 1275 but the actual expense for January is only 1025 and 250 were accrued because they were unpaid so let's see how we're going to record these two days on December 31st remember it's only two days there are the problem so the adjusting entry would be debiting wages expense because we incurred the expense we, we debit that and we credit wages payable which is a liability, something like accounts payable, but since these are for our employees, we call it wages payable. C, it's December 31st, which indicates an adjusting entry. Wages expense is an income statement account, wages payable is a balance sheet account, because it's a liability account. 250, 250 on the debit and credit side. So let's see the impact on the accounting equation. Under liabilities, we have wages payable, it's on the credit for 250. On for, for stockholders' equity, uh, it's actually not directly the stockholders' equity, it's the expense account, which has a negative impact on the stockholders' equity. This is going to be debited for 250, which is increasing our wage expense. <clears throat> so as shown in Exhibit 5, Net Solution paid wages of 1275 on January 10th. 
The, this payment includes the 250 of accrued wages recorded on December 31st. So the payment that we're going to be made on January 10th includes two parts, the wages payable for 250 and the wages expense of 1025 So this is going to be a unique journal entry. It's not an adjusting entry, remember, because we have cash here. Once we see cash, we know this is not an adjusting entry. Second of all, this is on January 10th, where we actually made the payment. Remember, if I go back here, on January 10th, we're going to make the payment for these 10 days, which include two days for the month of December work. Okay? So, this is going to be unique because we're going to have three accounts recorded in the journal entry. But even though there, these are three accounts, two of them are going to be on the debit side, and one would be on the credit side with the same value. So, on the debit, 1020, 1000 275, that's the debit total. The credit total is, is 1,275. So we debit wages expense for the eight days of the month of January. See, these are the eight days. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. The paid wages were 1,025. So we debit that, the wages expense, and then we debit the wages payable for 250. When we debit the wage payable, we are reducing the liability. Remember, that was how we recorded it in the adjusting entry. We credited the, the wages payable uh, by $250 in the adjusting entry on December 31st. Now we need to get rid of this because we already paid the wages. So on January 10th, we're going to get rid of this by debiting the wages, wages payable. When we debit the liability, we're actually reducing the liability. In other words, in this case, we're canceling the liability because the entire value, the 250. The total for these is the amount of cash that was paid, which is 1,275. So that's, that's not an adjusting entry. That's a real transaction because we actually paid the 12,075, but we're trying to see that part of it was an expense, the other part was a liability from the month of December. So what if we forgot to record this adjusting entry? So the adjustments for wages of 250 is not recorded. Wages expense will be understated by 250, and that income would be overstated by 250. And you can see here that on the income statement part. Revenues is not going to be impacted because that has nothing to do with the revenue. But for the expense, because we didn't record the expense for these two days, the expenses will be understated. When expenses are understated, that would be increasing net income or the impact would be overstating net income. So the net income would be misleading because we did not record all of our expenses so the net income would be overstated or be showing a value that's more than reality. So if net income is overstated what do you think this would impact the stockholders equity? It would be also overstated. And for the liabilities because we did not record the liability on December 31st which is amount of wages payable we're going to have our liabilities understated. So the net impact of this is that we understate net expenses or our expenses. We are, this would lead to an overstatement of net income. This would also lead to an understatement of liabilities and un, an overstatement of stockholders equity. <clears throat> now let's talk about adjusting entries for deferrals. And remember the word deferral means prepaid. I know it might not sound like deferral is prepaid, but in accounting, when we defer something, it's like something that has been paid in advance. Accruals, these are unpaid. So deferrals, these are prepaid. We are actually deferring the revenue and the expense. So December 31st unadjusted trial balance of net solutions indicates a balance in the, earned, in the unearned rent account of $360. So in other words, the tenants pay us $360 or rent in advance. Did we earn this rent? Not yet. So this balance represents the receipts of three month rent on December 1st for December, January, and February. At the end of December, one month rent has been earned. So time passes, so now December, we earn the rent revenue. But not the entire 360, only one third of this amount, which is $120. So we need to make an adjusting entry to record this kind of deferred revenue. So when they made the payment December 1st, 
when the, the, the tenants made the payment on December 1st, that was a deferred revenue. Or in other words, unearned revenue, which, is, which created a liability on our side. We need to reduce this liability and recognize the revenue. So the adjusting entry, again, is going to be December 31st. Remember, that's an adjusting entry. We debit the unearned rent, which is a liability account. When we debit the liability, we're reducing the liability. And then we credit rent revenue. And that's a revenue that's been earned now, $120. We didn't take the entire 360. We only took one third of this because it was paid for three months. Now only one month, which is December, has been earned. So we have the $120. So under liabilities, we're going to reduce the liability by debiting it for $120. And under revenue, which is, which is something that would have a positive impact on stockholders' equity, we're going to credit the $120 for rent revenue. We earn the rent. And that's an adjusting entry to recognize the revenue for the rent. What if we forgot to make this adjusting entry? Because again, the accountant's job is to make sure that these adjusting entries have been taken care of. So if the preceding adjustments of unearned rent and rent revenue is not recorded, has been ignored or omitted, the financial statements prepared on December 31st would be misstated. And what would be the impact of this omission? Revenue would be understated by 120. And when revenue is understated, net income would be understated. And I hope you, by now you, you, you get to know what I mean by understated. It's like less than it should be. So the revenue would be $120 less than it should be, and net income would be less than it should be. Same thing for the balance sheet. The liabilities would be overstated, okay, by $120. And because net income was understated, that would also have an impact on stockholders' equity. It would be also understated because net income and stockholders' equity, they work in the same direction. <clears throat> Let's see another adjusting entry, and here we have a prepaid expense. We are the ones who prepaid for an expense before we receive the service. So the December 31st, year three, unadjusted trial balance for Net Solutions, it showed supplies balance of $2,000. In addition, the prepaid insurance account has a balance of $2,400. So we had two types of prepayments here. We had supplies and we had insurance. So we paid an advance for insurance of $2,400. Each of these accounts would require an adjusting entry. So let's start with the supplies. So supplies at the very beginning were 2,000. At the end of the period, there were 760. So we used the difference, which is 1240. So to record or make an adjusting entry for the amount of supplies used, we're going to debit supplies expense and we credit supplies. So supplies expense, it's an expense account goes on the debit side, supplies is an asset, we're reducing it because we used it, so it's going to be credited for 1240. Remember, assets, when they go down, they go on the credit side. So, under assets, we're crediting the supplies for 1240, and for supplies expense, which is something that has a negative impact on stockholders' equity, it would be debited for 1240. Okay? Again, make sure that you review the rules for debit and credit. So assets and expenses, they normally increase on the debit side. And of course, dividends. For liabilities, stockholders, equity, and revenue, they normally increase on the credit side. Okay? And whenever we decrease them, we do the opposite. Now let's see insurance. So the debit balance of 2400 in Net Solutions prepaid insurance account represents a December 1st repayment of insurance for 12 months. How much is that per month? You take the 2400 divided by 12, that's going to be $200 per month. So we need to record $200 every month we every time every month passes then in this case we're going to record uh, an insurance expense of of $200. So at the end of December, the insurance expense account is increased or debited, and the prepaid insurance account, which, is, which was an asset, is going to be credited. It's going to go down by $200. So how the adjusting entry would look like? We have December 31st. We debit insurance expense. We credit prepaid insurance. Insurance expense is an expense account, and expenses are recorded on the debit side. Prepaid insurance is an asset, but now we're using part of it. It's going down. So we credited by the 
and that's how it's translated here on the accounting equation. You see that prepaid insurance as an asset is going down by 200, insurance expense is going up by 200. And when I say going down for assets, that means it's credited. And when I say insurance expense is going up, it's, it means that it's debited. What happens if we forgot to make this journal entry, or I mean adjusting entry? So if the preceding adjustments for supplies, 1240 and insurance 200 are not recorded, the financial statements prepared as of December would be misstated. How would that be presented on the income statement and the balance sheet? Expenses, because we were not going to record our expenses, 1440 would be understated. And by understated, it's less than it should be. And if our expenses are less than it should be, our net income would be higher than it should be. Because remember, expenses, they have a negative impact on net income. So when we don't record the real expenses, the net income would be more than it should. And that would also have a positive impact on stockholders' equity. Not in a good way, but it means like the stockholders' equity would be overstated more than it should be by 1440 because of the overstatement of net income. How about assets? Our supplies, our prepaid insurance would be overstated by 1440 because we did not adjust it. We did not adjust these two accounts. So they're going to be overstated by 1440. <clears throat> so payments for prepaid expenses are sometimes made at the beginning of the period in which they will be entirely used or consumed. So on December 1st, Net Solutions paid rent of $800 for the month. On December 1st, the rent payment of 800 represents prepaid rent. However, the prepaid rent expires daily, and at the end of December, there will be no assets left. In such cases, the payments of the 800 dollars is recorded as rent expense rather than prepaid rent. So in this way, no adjustment entry is needed at the end of the period. So again, this is just an exception for prepaid ex ex expenses. <clears throat> One more adjusting entry. Uh, we need to also learn is adjusting entries for depreciation. And depreciation is a little bit unique so in the next video I'll talk more about depreciation and we're going to uh, summarize all these adjusting entries and uh, we'll see how the adjusted trial balance would look like.